Um, hello for all of you. And this one now is a, uh, it's, it was supposed to be a uh, talk or discussion around dispersed namespace and how we can handle dispersed namespace on Linux. So, um, as a quick background check here, um, dispersed namespaces are essentially uh, something where the primary use case is some um, is synchronous copy, such that you can copy over namespaces from one physical subsystem to another one, and that you can have um, essentially um, doing remote replications and something like that. This is already being um, supported on SCSI for well, ages immemorial because SCSI simply doesn't care. Um, the SCSI relies on, device, on DM multipathing and that just looks as at the identification of that device and if two devices have the same identification, they will be the same full stop. No questions asked irrespective on who provides that device. For NVMe, it's slightly different as NVMe has a far more strict um, device model which means or which implies that each namespace has to be provided by a subsystem. Note the A, uh, that is one subsystem. You cannot have the same device appearing, or a, a namespace providing the same identification on another subsystem. Sadly, this is precisely that, what you need to have if you want to support this use case. So arguably, the use case breaks the um, NVMe model in its current form, but the, um, the official way of doing things is also, has also issues which are not easily solvable. So the official way would be that you just extend the subsystem across several, several physical systems. But in doing so, you would need to coordinate the properties of that subsystem between all systems which you have, which can't really done dynamically because then you will always have a synchronization problem. So you would somehow need to partition up the subsystem, statically partition up the subsystem such that each node can act independently. But if you partition up your subsystem, you will end up, or you inevitably will face scalability issues because each partition re reduces the scalability you have. And that's a good case. There are other things to be contemplated and so on. Right. So um, I have been thinking of how we could do things from the Linux side because um, the problem I personally have is that this use case is happily supported when running DM multipathing, especially when running DM multipathing on NVMe. Sadly, this is the one use case we tried to do away with on Linux. And now we are in a bit of a weak arguing spot um, that we need to want to deprecate something which does work against something which does not work. Hmm, which I'm not that happy with. So the one idea I had was to make it co completely virtualized in, in, uh, on the Linux side, such that we always have a one-to-one -one mapping between subsystems and namespaces, essentially that each namespace creates its own logical subsystem, which then doesn't have anything to do with the actual subsystem as being seen by the target. This is arguably a hack, but has the um, the benefit that all of the contentious issues, issues are sidestepped because it will just work irrespective on how the scaling is. And is incidentally is the exact model which DM multipathing also does. The alternative would be to somehow update the spec that the spec becomes more, well, more in line to what um, Linux expects. But then this whole discussion is slightly moot because Christoph says, well, he wouldn't even want to contemplate things, so right. Um, I'm not really in a position to make any proposals because those proposals will be rejected and we will be, well, stuck with not supporting them. Yes, and that is the 
current to uh, current topic and current uh, um, discussion we had. So I'm not sure whether there's anything we really can do at this point here, because well, hmm. So hmm, and so I'm here, and I'm not sure what to how to proceed. Right. Okay. Um, I'm not sure whether it's um, useful to continue the, disc the discussion at this point here because, um, well, it might just lead to further aggrievance uh, on both sides and um, I think we should just first come to terms how we as a Linux community will want to go ahead here. And this is not really something I can do. John had some comments over Zoom. Can we ask add them back in? Hey, so I think you raised a question that I've uh, brought up on more than one occasion, which is, you know, would this actually be a use case for supporting some type of NVMe uh, multipathing with DMMP? Right. So I, I, you know, basically all multipathing is, you know, within the subsystem upstream is supported by NVMe core na native multipathing. Right. But I was thinking if we could simply add another type of identifier so as not to confuse, you know, the problem is, is that we seized upon the NID in the specification and we said this NID, um, even though historically in its implementation, is identified nam namespaces uniquely within the subsystem. We use that same identifier in the spec and said, oh no, we're gonna redefine what this, you know, semantically redefine what this NID is used for. And we're now gonna start, uh, you know, asking, you know, the host to do multi-pathing multi across subsystems, right? So if we could somehow or other convince people to support that this might be a use case that would actually be a valid use case for DM, the MMP multipathing, then I think it really becomes a very simple thing of adding some type of new NID, right, which is only for dispersed namespaces. And then the problem, you know, really becomes something that has to be solved outside of the kernel. It's at this point it is not a technical discussion. There are plenty of, well, several um, technical solutions to it, which could easily be implemented on Linux. This is not the problem. The problem is whether they will be implemented and whether patches trying to implement will go upstream. That is the problem, not a technical. So as I said, it is not a technical discussion at this point. So. Well, so all I'm, all I'm saying, Hannes, is in our conversations with Christoph and with all there parties. There are conversations right? which need to be had. Right. But these are not technical conversations. And as such, this is possibly not the right venue of discussing them. It's really, I, I personally find it really sad because that is precisely why we did LSF to solve these kind of things. And now it turns out that we can't do it at LSF, which I personally find really sad, but that's the way it is. All right, well, you'll have to talk to me offline about why that's true, yep, but. <laughs> yep. So anyway. So just for the sake of completeness, there's a TPAR that was proposed for dispersed names. Yes. Is correct? Okay, and the status of that TPAR is not ratified, right? The yeah, status, so it was ratified status of the probably four or more months ago. Yeah. Okay. Unanimous approval by the NVMe committee. Okay, so if, if there's something that's been ratified and it's made in the spec, why would we have an issue with Linux support? Of there is, there's a lot of ratified TPARs that don't have Linified Linux support. So, I mean, okay. just because it's ratified doesn't mean the OS is going to implement it. Yeah, okay. so it is a bit of these things. So yes, it is um, in the same sense as whatever 8010 has been ratified. So yes, there's lots of things which are necessary, doesn't really make sense to support on Linux or for which the actual use case is somewhat questionable. But so I guess the question is, you know, conceptually, is this like another thing like conglomerate LUNs, which was highly desired by a storage vendor, but nobody had was particularly interested in doing it? So right. as, I, as I said, this is, it is not a technical discussion. discussion. Well, conglomerate LUNs were supported by some non-Linux hosts. 
Uh, quite honestly, that was <laughs> a big pain for some of us storage vendors, but we had a, a particular host that was very interested in it, so we worked together on it. And and this case, yeah, and I don't. We have this. We have these. Dis we have dispersed LUNs today under SCSI. We have solutions that we've been shipping for uh, a decade or more, um, and it would be wonderful if we could migrate them to NVMe. But um, right now, that's mired in this debate. Yeah. Well, it, it's a political engineering problem, right? But those are very much every bit of real problems, and it, it, I, I agree that it comes down to. What are the use cases that Linux wants to support, right? There's plenty of features and functionality that are in SCSI, right? That Linux never supported. You know, I, I think we're going through the same evolution with NVMe, right? Yeah, but I mean, but so, the um, so the thing is that this is an actual use case and for which there are. So could you lot enumerate the use cases? Because most of us, this is an esoteric right. discussion about standards. Okay. What would a customer actually so, do? Um, that they the can't the one use case Linux? is migra data migration, online data migration. That's cop that could be copy offload, right? Could be what? Yes, it could be copy offload if the host you, is you willing could, to, you could to be, do you all could, of that work. You, you could be copy offload, but that would result in having a dis different device node on the other side. See, the goal with this is to do just what you do with SCSI. You go to your loading dock, you bring in your new system, drop it in place, connect it to the old system, wait a while, issue a few admin commands uh, on the storage side of it, and then you wheel the old one out and take it down to the landfill, and the host is none the wiser. We'd like yeah. to be able to do that with NVMe. That's one of the use cases for this. That's, Another that's use one. case is geographically dispersed systems where you have multiple hosts on each end of different geographic plates. You've got one system with its storage in Singapore and one with its storage in Kansas City. And you've got them connected and you want them to be able to share that information. And both hosts can access both sites because the storage looks the same. And when you have a disaster somewhere, one of them takes over completely transparently. Um, and that requires things to appear as if they're the same thing. If we require different identities on each end, then we have to have manual intervention involved. We have to have different kinds of failover mechanisms, and it becomes a, a much larger engineering effort um, to be able to, to deal with that kind of failure scenario. So, so those are the two primary use cases. Uh, so duplication and disaster recovery. Yeah, right. uh, duplication is, is the primary, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whether it be you know, replacement and systems the, or and, um, not only the data migration and disaster recovery are the two main use cases. And and so, Fred, I'll I'll just agree disagree a little bit with what you said right. It's 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 really kind of a hot potato question because what we did was we uh, the you know as we were developing the TPAR in NVMe, we tried to reduce the amount of identifiers that needed to be replicated and managed by the subsystem to the smallest number of identifiers, right? And we seized upon the, the NID to, to do that, right? So, and so I kind of see this almost, a, I understand, and as you say, it's not a technical argument, but you know, there is a technical argument here because the question is, well, do we need to replicate more than one type of identifier, namely, namely the subsystem identifier, right? The NQN or the host ID, if you have to start replicating those across your disaster tolerance uh, failure domains, well, then that's going to take a lot more work for the storage providers, right? The only and so issue I have it's the, with the current approach, with, sorry to barge in there, um, the only issue which really is questionable for me is the granularity. If really the use cases are fa um, disaster recovery and essentially system replacement, do we really need to have it at the na namespace level granularity, i.e., does it make sense to copy over or to identify individual na namespaces, or rather, would it far more useful and actually sensible conceptually by duplicating subsystems? I would agree with that. So, um, because that would mean in the current, how it's currently uh, specified, it means that some namespaces will be copied over and some don't. Well, also Which means you that could. We have two subsystems, or rather, uh, that we have two subsystems providing different informations, but con uh, 
different namespaces, but partially containing the same information. Both subsystems are accessed from the very same host. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. So right. why should the host see different state from one system on, uh, from systems on both sides? Wouldn't it be far more, uh, far more sensible to make the granularity the subsystem if and you copy over the entire scope of the subsystem, seeing that we can modify the contents of the subsystem as more or less at will? You could do that by limiting your use cases. Uh, right now, we don't control in the SCSI environment yeah. how customers group their data, how they scale their data, how they you know, put their data on different targets, and which applications use which data from which targets, how much parallel I.O. you want to get by using multiple targets versus funneling all your I.O. to a single target. All of those are different kinds of configurations which customers make use of, and to be able and to limit in the way that you have uh, the way that you've described it, or how I've understood what you're describing, um, would be a pretty severe limitation on what those use cases are that customers are using today. Well, I'm going to disagree, Fred. I think Kenneth said it. It's just like we said. It's just a question of what identifiers do you want? You know, do you want to use? Yeah. So, right. See, and my feeling is, is in the case where all else fails and you can't come to a consensus about that, you create a brand new identifier. Well. Uh, we, we picked the same identifier, the committee decided on the same identifier that was used in SCSI, was the identifier through which you identify the data set, the namespace. And we said, well, it worked for SCSI, so let's just pick the same one for NVMe. And if right. we gotta pick something different, if we gotta invent a new one, then yeah, we can always talk about it. That That's the whole point of the discussion, is to right. discuss but that, 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 that kind of just That kind of just turns NVMe into SCSI, right? And this is one of the tensions that's going on in this discussion, right? So, well, you know. To replace SCSI with NVMe, then the NVMe system has to meet the same use cases that the SCSI system met. How it does it well, can certainly be different, but we can't, if we can't replace if, if, if you're gonna, system, then we can't replace the technology. If you're gonna, if you're gonna turn the NVMe subsystem into a SCSI target, which is what some people want to do architecturally, right? What you're saying makes sense, right? But there's a whole nother interpretation uh, of how NVMe has historically been uh, kind of architected in that NVMe doesn't really, wasn't really designed to scale namespaces within a subsystem, but it was made to, to scale subsystems, right? And once we start putting thousands and thousands of namespaces into, you know, into a subsystem, then it starts to look more and more like a SCSI target, you know, with with a bunch of little IT nexuses. But that's not the way the queue mechanics were designed in NVMe. Well, right. Given that from day one they supported sixty-four thousand namespaces, four with billion, six, four billion, four billion, four billion namespaces with sixty-four thousand queues per controller, I would. I would disagree that your argument about scale. You're, you're, but, you're, but you're talking about you're talking about an architectural limit. I'm talking about realities in the implementation, right? I mean, if I if I have to, you know, uh, if I implement my namespace map in the in the target device in the in the controller, if I implement it as as an as an array, right? That's going to be extremely fast, extremely cache efficient. And it, you know, but I'm not going to be able to scale, you know, to thousands and thousands and thousands of namespaces. So there are implementation concerns, you know, and again, just because, you know, SCSI also has large address address spaces that have never been realized, right? That's a part of what we dealt with with, with conglomerate lines. Like, oh, look at, we can address all kinds of things here. So I don't really find that as an argument to say, well, because architecturally you've got all these address ranges, address, you know, space, that that means that that's the right thing for Linux to implement support for those. Well, I, I go back to if we want NVMe to replace SCSI, if, if some people want that to happen, then we do have to match the use cases. What the implementation looks like, what the protocol looks like, those are a completely set, different set of discussions than the general use cases. The, the way that customers are getting their work done, those things, they still have to do the exact same things they used to do. And if, they want, if they're doing it with SCSI, they'd like to find a way to do it with NVMe. So that's what we're trying to set out to do. 
I'm sorry, I missed the beginning of the first, but maybe you mentioned this. What it was proposed that you use virtual subsystems to abstract it, the host has no idea this is even happening. So was that not a technical solution to the problem yeah, that someone's adversely The, the problem with virtual subsystems is all of the state. But if you look in NVMe, there are massive amounts of subsystem state. There aren't the namespace IDs. There are also endurance groups IDs. There are NVM set IDs. There are A and A group IDs. There are all of these things which are state that is specific to the subsystem. In these environments, when you have geographically dispersed environments, that you have to be able to manage independently at each end, even when the communication channel is broken between them, that state becomes very hard to manage unless you start subdividing it. And if you start subdividing it, then you break all of those scaling things that are part of the architecture, and, and it becomes a, a big pain to manage. So the idea of a single virtual subsystem is, it, it, I, you know, I, I can't name the vendors, but but all of the large storage array vendors that were in the committee meeting where this stuff was being talked about basically said, we can't do that. It's simply not possible over the communication links we have to share that amount of information and then to re-coordinate and merge it all back together again when that communication link breaks and gets reestablished. It's, it's just not possible. It's, it is possible. And uh, <laughs> you and I are both aware of implementations that do that. This is, this is a part of what's done with SCSI. Right, it's it's a lot of work, right? And like I said, this come today comes to a hot potato issue where it's like, hey, if we can just change, you know, change this one thing, then it's going to be a lot easier for us. There's less global state that has to be managed by the subsystem and by the controllers. So. Yeah, but yeah. you know, there are implementations that have the same issue, and this is what they did with SCSI. They they took the SCSI target object and they stretched it across two failure domains in two different geos. And yeah, there's a lot of technical issues there, but you know, implementations today, you know, SCSI implementations today, they do it. So I, I, I'm saying I can see, I, I can see both sides of the issue, right? I, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, what's right or what's wrong. I just think that what is under purview here in this, in this, in LSFMM is, uh, you know, what is it that Linux wants to support? What is it that Linux wants to do? And I think it's perfectly reasonable for Linux to, you know, push back a little bit and say, hey, if we can make some technical changes, you know, to the protocol that would maybe split the difference here between the storage subsystems and the host stack, you know, I think that's a reasonable, a reasonable compromise. The other question that I have, which is sort of a more general question is, you know, I think that we're seeing from some of the storage vendors this tendency to sort of, I think, achieve either feature parity or basically take everything that they had in their product that was supported through SCSI and somehow support that on NVMe, right? And so, um, you know, there um, is a, I think we may have a certain responsibility to you know, prevent everything, including the kitchen sink, being thrown in just because it used to be there. Um, right. I'm, so, so I'm, I mean, there, I, I, I think it's important that we actually have some justification of, you know, why is this actually have to be incorporated when essentially what we're trying to do with NVMe is provide a, a cleaner sheet of paper where we don't go and turn it into, you know, a giant bucket of everything everyone ever thought of. And so the question is, is this really important enough that it's worth? you know, pursuing. So um, I'm actually already trying to do that and by just, well, take part in the discussion with the NDME Express Committee and see how whatever that proposed there would reflect back on Linux and whether it makes sense or what we need to do to support this particular one on, on Linux or rather then formulate it that way that even that particular thing um, doesn't really affect us. Case in point here is this ominous uh, T power 8010. So there's a T power for uh, essentially modeling zoning on um, TCP. So basically modeling fiber channel zoning, uh, zoning on top of TCP, which is something, yes, you can do, but really doesn't really add the benefit to 
to us from the Linux side, so all right, if you want to do it, by all means do. So pff, we don't really care. But there again, the standard, uh, the spec needs to be formalized that way, that the whole thing is optional, such that yes, you can do it if you really want, but others who don't want to do it still can live with that, uh, with that, uh, with that standard and don't have to implement it. So yes, this is something which I'm already trying to do, but then at one, one thing is that this was um, prior to that. And also that, again, as I said, it's not really a technical issue. To implement this in Linux is, well, not exactly trivial, but it's about five patches. None of them are very intrusive, so blech, blech, it's not hard. And so it's really not a technical issue at this point. So I fully agree with you. If that were a technical issue, if say we would have to redesign our entire storage model for NVMe for this for this particular use case, yeah, clear. I, would I definitely would argue. I would agree with you that one would have to strike the balance here between who is need to do the work. Is it us or is it the storage vendors? Of course. But in this case, from our side, it's not really work which we need to do. So, and just forcing the storage vendors to invest a massive amount of time to upgrading their firmware for something which we could do relatively easy on our own is, well, not to say unfair, but really isn't, isn't sensible from my standpoint. But again, uh, I think we um, should terminate the discussion here because, again, it is not a technical one. Sorry. It's going to be a compromise somehow. We need to compromise eventually. That's a bit, you know, you're crying again. At one point, you have to talk. If you like, right. to, you have to. Yeah, I just don't think we have all the right people in the room to, you know, yeah, exactly. to make those compromises. And that's what it comes down to. Good. Um, Omar, what's next? Uh, Keith is up next, talking Keith. about subsector, subsector reads. Oh, yes. Grab a dongle first. 